Hello students, welcome to Asia's IS Institute. Looking at current affairs for 27th April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these nine. We'll look at them in detail. The first one, cases near 27,000 mark with increase of 1,975 in 24 hours. So here you can see the number of cases, how they have increased in the country. So India's COVID-19 cases and deaths are progressing much slower than many countries, but they are still steadily crossing certain milestones. So here you can see how number of cases have increased. So India took four days to progress to 25,000 cases from 20,000. Among 17 nations, only Switzerland took more days than India, that is seven days. So India is progressing slowly. But here you can see number of deaths also have increased. India took four days to progress to 800 deaths from 600. But other countries took more days. You can see Ireland, Portugal took more days. But in terms of absolute figures, you can see the number of cases. You can see India has crossed 25,000 mark. So it's amongst the 17 nations which have crossed 25,000 mark and also uh, crossed number of uh, 800 deaths so 19 nations have crossed 800 number of deaths so india is one of them and here you have expo excerpts from confederation of indian industry cii survey of 180 companies which was conducted on april 23 and 24 so 46 percent of firms means what is the status of indian industries 46 percent of firms said permits to operate were either not available or were delayed so they are not getting permits to operate 42% said passes to workers were either not readily provided or were delayed. So they are suffering from workers reaching the sites as such too. And 62% of firms said transport facilities for imports and finished goods were either not available at all or were disrupted and delayed. So these are the problems faced by industries which are allowed to operate too. 31% firms said daily, daily commute of workers is an issue. 36% said it is somewhat of an issue. So we are suffering from these problems. The next is only 15% of poor households received pulses. So this is under the program which was announced by the central government. So Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. So it was said that under the public distribution system, under the National Food Security Act, 80 crore beneficiaries, they will get 5 kg extra of rice or wheat. So per month, per month 5 kg is allowed is provided under PDS, public distribution system. So it was said that 5 kg more would be allowed. And also 1 kg of pulses would be provided. So this was announced in March 2020 by Finance Minister Nirmala Sintharaman as part of the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. So this was said to be extra ration allocation worth 1.7 lakh crores. And it would begin from, uh, will be there for 3 months, April to June. So, though extra rice and wheat has been provided to beneficiaries because PDS system is well established in all states where rice and wheat is provided. So, grains are provided with the help of network of food cooperation of India warehouses. So, extra grain has been provided from April, but if you look at from start of April, but if you look at the provision for pulses, it has not been provided. It is said only 15% of poor households have received this 1 kg pulse, which was pulses, which was promised under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan. So, of the 1.96 lakh tons of pulses that should have been given, only 30,000 tons has been provided. So, it is overall targeting 19 crore households. So why is there a delay in providing pulses when rice and wheat has been provided? It is said that government stores pulses. The nodal agency for procuring and storing buffer stock of pulses of the central government is Nat National Agriculture Cooperative Marketing Federation, NAFED. And uh, government stores unmilled pulses in its towns. And it has started a massive milling operation now. And uh, milling also takes place through truckloads being sent to mills and the pulses need to be milled. And then they will go to ration shops. So all this is a time-consuming process. Transportation is not easily available. Truck drivers are not available. So these are the concerns being faced because of which pulses have not reached households. The next is... Saudi Arabia abolishes flogging as punishment. So, Saudi Arabia has abolished flogging. You know, this is lashing with uh, you know, the, the culprit as such. So, 1000 lashes as such were provided into, were awarded in 2014. 
to one of the Saudi blogger, Ref Badawi. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison as well as 1,000 lashes. So his charge of his was insulting Islam. So this was the most high profile instance of flogging in recent years. And now flogging has been abolished in Saudi Arabia on 25th April 2020. So this is a major step forward in the reform process which has been launched by King of Saudi Arabia and his powerful son, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. So here you can see many human rights reforms have been brought in in Saudi Arabia. But at the same time, human rights violation is also taking place. Dissent is suppressed. So it's King Salman, he had named his son as the Crown Prince. Mohammed bin Salman. So the, this had taken place in June 2017. Since then, many ambitious economic and social reforms have brought, been brought in. Like women have been allowed to drive in Saudi Arabia. Sports and entertainment has been eased in Saudi Arabia. But then at the same time, you can see dissent has been uh, has been brutally repressed. The most uh, prominent case of it is brutal murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Turkey, in Istanbul, in October 2018. And uh, students at home have also been increasingly repressed. So though uh, economy and society has been modernized, dissent has been clamped down in Saudi Arabia. Then next is Pakistan test fires series of anti-ship missiles. So Pakistan Navy has successfully test fired a series of anti-ship missiles in the North Arabian Sea. They were fired from surface ships, pigs, and rotary wing aircraft. The Navy did not provide any further detail on the drill, but this is uh, taking place, these tests are firing, are taking place at a time when India Pakistan relations are cold. Then, next is Yemen separatists declare self rule in South. So, Yemen's main southern separatist group announced on 26th April that it would establish self rule in areas under its control. So Yemen's this uh, South Separatist Group, which is Southern Transitional Council. So STC, it is uh, an ally of Saudi-backed government in Yemen. So the so Southern Transitional Council is actually supported by supported by UAE, United Arab Emirates, of which Dubai is also a part. So it is part of Saudi ally alliance only in Yemen's war. Yemen's war is actually against the Houthi rebels. So they are all fighting against the Houthi rebels, but now Southern Transitional Council is saying that we will establish self-rule in areas under our control, which is of course not to the liking of the entire coalition, saudi backed government. So this is the announcement being made by STC that it is, it is announcing emergency rule in Aden. So Aden is the capital of Yemen. So it has announced emergency rule here and all Southern governance. And it says that it would take control of Aden's port and airport and other state institutions such as Central Bank. So here the map shows the area under control of Southern Transitional Council. So this is Yemen. You can see Gulf Cooperation Council backed Hadi administration. So the government of Yemen which is supported by Saudi-led coalition is of Hadi. So this is the area under control of Hadi administration and through Saudi-led coalition. And this purple area shows the area under Houthi rebels. So here is the Houthi rebels. And this area is the area under Southern Transitional Council control. Here lies Aden, the capital of Yemen. So that's it. The next is Australia cancels premier air exercise. So Australia has informed India that its premier multilateral air combat ex training exercise Pitch Black 2020 which was scheduled from July 27 to August 14 has been cancelled due to COVID-19 situation. So the next edition of Pitch Black is scheduled for 2022. 2018 was the last Pitch Black exercise which took place which was also attended by Indian Navy, uh, sorry Indian Air Force. So this is the first time that uh, Indian Air Force fighter aircrafts had been deployed here and bilateral air naval exercises are also taking place with Australia. It's called Ausindex, which has already been conducted in 2019, which saw the participation of largest Australian contingent ever to India with 1000 personnel. So Ausindex is a bilateral exercise and Pitch Black is a multilateral exercise involving Australia and 2020 Pitch Black has been cancelled. So it will take in, in 2022 now. Then next is first merger of two black holes with unequal masses detected. 
So for the first time uh, since LIGO started functioning, Gravitational Wave Observatory LIGO, so it has detected for the first time merger of two unequal masses of black holes. So these were two black holes, one was some 30 times the mass of the sun and other was nearly 8 times the mass of the sun. So these two unequal black holes uh, merged and this event has been dubbed, has been named GW190412. And it was detected nearly a year ago and it's almost five years after the first ever detection of gravitational waves took place by LIGO, the powerful detectors. What are LIGOs and how does it happen? We'll see the detail too. So here you can see uh, these are, this is what is gravitational wave waves. It was actually predicted by uh, uh, Albert Einstein, his theory of general relativity. In this theory, Einstein talks of gravity as a phenomena res resulting from the curvature of space-time. And this curvature, he said, is caused by the presence of mass. So more the mass uh, is contained within a given volume of space, the greater will be the curvature of space-time. So as objects with mass move around in space-time, curvature changes to reflect the change location of those objects. So these are the waves which are generated and these waves are propagated outwards. So you know, accelerating objects generate changes in curvature and these are propagated like light waves. So these are known as gravitational waves. So this is an image showing here that you can see. So this is space time means the space as such as, you, as we understand. So just as waves in a pond are created by disturbance in the water, gravitational waves are created by disturbance in the fabric of space time. So entire universe is in space time. So the black hole creates a disturbance and gravitational waves are generated. So lots of things can create gravitational waves, but most are too weak for us to measure. Luckily, because black holes distort space-time so much, they can create waves that can detect, can be detected here on Earth. So black holes, what are black holes also you should know? Black holes are actually collapsed remains of stars, many times more massive than our sun too. And when a star dies, its core collapses under the gravitational force of its own mass and it forms a black hole. So these are black holes when they merge. So gravitational waves generated are so strong that we can detect them on Earth. So Einstein calculated a whirling bubble shaped mass such as two black holes spiraling together radiating ripples in space time which were called gravitational waves. So they were detected for the first time five years ago through LIGO. So this is LIGO two observatories, gravitational wave observatories which are located in USA, around 3000 kilometer apart, one in Hanford and one in Livingston. So how this LIGO works also you can see. So it is uh, you know, around 4 kilometer arms which it has and when a wave makes the arm unequal in length, you can see so when there is no distortion, so the LIGO uh, has equal times as such for the waves to travel. But when there is a distortion, then that can be detected through this observator. So the arm length uh, detection it becomes unequal. So that's how the gravitational waves are detected. You can see it's shown here. So this is one beam, this is the other beam. So it uses, LIGO uses laser so to measure the changes in the distance between the ends. So when gravitational waves enter it, it stretches space and direction and disperses space in another direction. So by measuring interference of lasers, as they bounce between the two points, scientists can map if space has been compressed or stretched. So lasers are sent and received. So these laser beams, you can see there's a mirror at the end and laser is being sent and received. So if there's any distortion, it can be detected. So these are LIGO observatories across the globe. Two, as we saw, are in USA. One in Hanford and other in Livingston. Another LIGO has been established in India. It is also known as Indigo. And then we have Virgo, which is a gravitational wave observatory of Europe. And Kagra in Japan. So here you can see again detail is given regarding LIGO. The full form of LIGO is Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. This is a complete image being given here too. You can see the laser source is placed here. The detector is placed here. And these are two arms, 4 kilometer length arms. So the laser source sent waves, one goes in this direction, the uh, splitter beam splitter splits it into two parts, one goes in this direction, the other here. And then they are again returned and detected. So the time frame is seen. 
and if there is any difference then it means a gravitational wave has been detected so you can see normal operation is this no distortion and if there is gravitational wave distortion then a strong strong signal is passed so we should know albert einstein predicted gravitational waves in 1916 in his general theory of relativity and gravitational waves were detected in 2015 for the first time Then next is UN agency, UN equip, which is for One Health. So World Health Organization and other UN agencies like United Nations Environment Program have all uh, pitched for One Health, which is an approach to designing and implementing programs, policies, legislation and research in which multiple sectors co communicate and work together to achieve better public health outcomes. So One Health approach is being, uh, you know, pitched in for food safety, control of zoonosis, like related diseases related to animals, like the COVID-19 presently, combating antibiotic resistance, etc. So it will help practitioners understand diseases determinants better, manage risks and optimize interventions. So we'll see in detail what this One Health is all about. So One Health is basically the idea that health of people is connected to health of animals and the shared environment. So when we protect one, we protect all. So it calls for coordination, communication and collaboration between people who protect human, animals and environment health along with other partners to achieve best health outcomes for people, animal, plants and our environment. So that is one health which will include issues like these. Zoonotic diseases, antibiotic resistance, food safety, environmental health, mental health, occupational health, etc. And the last news is what are concerns about Arogya Setu app? So, Arogya Setu app is a pan-India app which is available in 11 languages endorsed by the central government. It has been launched on 2nd April. It has been developed by National Informatics Center under the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, NITI. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi, when he extended the nationwide lockdown till May 3, he announced that Arogya Setu app should be downloaded by all. And soon it became one of the most downloaded apps globally and has crossed 75 million mark. The app has added functionalities also like donation to PM cares can also be done through the app. Also e-passes for essential service providers are being provided through the app. So basically this app is to keep track of other Arogya Setu users that a person came in contact with and alert him if any of his or contacts turns positive. So it's a contact tracing app and it uses mobile phones, uh, Bluetooth and GPS capabilities for ensuring this. So when you come close to any COVID-19 positive person, it will alert you. It also has a self-assessment survey. So it gives a color coding to the user. So green and yellow color based on self-assessment. So data of users who fall in yellow category are uploaded to the server. And those who are in the green category, they are in the lower risk group. They are, their data is in the app itself, but the yellow color coded person's uh, data would go to the servers too. So there are private privacy concerns which emerge. Then the question arises, has this app been uh, effective? So it is said Arogya Setu app also faces the same issues as every other contact tracing technology that has come up during the pandemic period, that it is people dependent. So it needs widespread usage and self-reporting to be effective. And any number of total users for Arogya Setu app will be a subset of the smartphone users in India, which is not many. And the terms of use of the app also say that the government is not responsible any, on, for any failure on part of the app in correctly identifying COVID-19 patients. Also, there are such other contact tracing apps like Singapore had this app developed, which is called Trace Together by uh, the brain behind this app was Jason Bay. He also has said that... Uh, you know, it has to work closely. The app has to work closely and constantly with frontline healthcare workers. So you cannot uh, you know, substitute uh, on-ground activity with the app. So to make the app effective, Trace Together's develops also worked with frontline healthcare workers and kept it updated. The next question is about whether there are privacy concerns with respect to the app. So privacy concerns are there already there is said to be a privacy law vacuum in india there is no legislation on privacy though right to privacy has been declared as a fundamental right by the uh, supreme court but parliament has not made any law on it and the language around who will have access to this app's data is also vague the policy says that persons carrying out medical and administrative interventions necessary in relation to covid 19 will have access to the data from it so when there are it is uh, you know, data being given 
uh, to interdepartmental exchanges will be possible and these uh, the sharing of data is more excessive than countries like uh, Singapore and even Brazil, even Israel it is said. So privacy concerns are there. Also it is said there are technical loopholes. The unique digital identity is created by Arugya Setu app which is a static number for every individual. So this increases the probability of identity breaches. While uh, Google, Apple, they have digital identification keys which are constantly changing. So they have also initiated joint tracing te uh, technology. So that is much advanced technology. But Arogya Setu uses static identif identification keys. Also it is said Arogya Setu uses both Bluetooth and GPS reference points. And it is said this could be an overkill. Other apps like the Trace Together only used Bluetooth. Also, it is said Arogya Setu app is something like a black box. There is no documentation publicly available on the app. And then there are Google and Apple uh, project also which is going on. So, Google, Apple are coordinating now the two technology giants. Still that they had uh, resisted the idea of integration, but now they are doing so thanks to the global crisis. So, Android and uh, uh, Apple uh, you know, operating system, iOS phones will now be able to talk to each other via Bluetooth. So Google and Apple, however, have uh, emphasized that consent would be required for this feature to track as such. Too. Privacy concerns will prevail. So this is the Arogya Setu app you can see here. So app will alert users if they come in proximity to the infected person and provide information. It's available in 11 languages. So it gives you know green label or green coding or yellow coding. Yellow coding means you are at risk and self-assessment test which is in so that is it thank you